Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel, and this is our old 1950s barn slash gymnasium. We've been doing a ton of videos on this and there's a playlist somewhere on the channel. I always forget to put it in the description, but here's where we're at now. Let me show you where we came from and tell you where we're going. So subscribers of the channel know that we recently purchased this building from Dirt Perfect. We've got around 6,500 square feet under roof. That is the top floor, which is what we started in there, the gymnasium and the bottom side of the building. We recently did some concrete work to stabilize that failing CMU wall on the backside. And then we started running some new beams to support the inside. And the whole reason we're putting these beams in is not only for additional support, but also so we can eventually rebuild these trusses, then take all these supports out, frame in some office space up here, leave a big old open area just for some good old fun, build a shop down below. There's a ton of stuff we want to do to this. It's a big space and something we can grow into, which is the whole point. We're trying to save the building and use it. That's the goal. I'm gonna get this cabinet up and out. I actually got this for free from my brother, Tony. And I can use this to put all the things I'm buying specifically for this project in here. That way everything's got a home and somewhat organized, including what we're gonna start the video out with, which is a little bit of wiring for something y'all been asking about. And the handy thing is if it's in my way, it's on wheels. Just roll it wherever I need it. So a lot of you have spotted these lights up top. We put those in whenever Mike first got this over a decade ago, I suppose. And in fact, and to be more specific, I put those in, which means I know what I did up there because to the best of my knowledge, those lights did work, but I disconnected everything because one of the things we did is we tagged into this old power cable there that actually operated, and I don't know if you can see them, but there's some big lights up above that beam. And we just kind of spliced it up there somewhere. And I wasn't super comfortable with that I also don't like that wire on the wall being exposed like that. So I got some inexpensive MC to run up there. Now this is not gonna be the permanent wiring for this solution, because at some point, way down the line, all this will change anyway. If it was the permanent, I'd just run some conduit and do it right. MC is gonna give it the protection I need to make me feel more comfortable about it. We'll fix the junction box up top. And whenever we go to change it, I could pull this back down, coil it up and use it another day for something else. And if you're wondering, why we're just now getting around the whole lighting thing. I was more concerned about the Dagon thing falling in on itself than I was the luxury of lighting and the LED lights were doing fine for me. But now that we got the bottom all stabilized and we've got four out of the five beams up, I feel a little bit more comfortable to take some time and get some luxuries in here, like some decent lighting. We're gonna reuse these box, but we gotta switch out the connectors since we're using MC instead of Romex. Here's your reminder, I'm not a licensed electrician, but where I'm at, if it's yours, you can work on it. But that doesn't mean you can still kind of be sloppy, even if you're not licensed. The fella still has got to play by the rules a little bit. Here's the inside of a Romex connector. You see how it's smooth minus, minus the clamp action right there? See how it's smooth on the inside? On an MC connector, see how it's got that little stop? It allows the wires to go through, but not the metal sheathing. The whole concept, my guess would be that they really don't want the metal sheathing accidentally being shoved into the panel and hit one of the bus bars. I don't think it'd be... Well, it'd be exciting for a little bit, but I don't think it'd be advantageous for the whole not burning something down thing. Because the bottom's already knocked out, we'll just put a 90 on it, like so. Come out of the box, and up the wall we can go. You can buy specific cutters for this. I'd say the pros probably use them. But I just give it an untwist and 
and snip the sheathing, pull it off there. But I do have to really pay attention and make sure that when I cut that, I didn't make any crazy sharp edges that's going to cut into the wire. And I like to use these little fellas. It's just a little extra safety measure. All right. Let's run it up the wall, huh? A ladder. We don't need one of those. No, that's not what the box said. Shoot. Oh, dang it. Well, you got to look at the package, not the label on the shelf. Sometimes people put them back in the wrong spot. These are half inch straps for EMT or for metal conduit. They're not what I need for this. I wasn't paying attention. It'll be better than nothing though. At least keep it from falling off the wall. That is one thing about MC. It's hard to make it look nice and neat because it's just got a lot of life in it, you know? All right. Certainly glad we're not doing this in the summertime. Not the type of surprise I really want at this height. You can see we've got a whole bunch of slack in it from this point on. Pretty much just a fancy extension cord now. Obviously we're going up with the roof, so I'm going to need some play. Now we're going to take this old out, get this light off of here, and uh, get that junction going on. So I guess the best way to describe this leg of it is it's just a temp service at this point. Just to see if we can get some light action going on. That should work. Okay, before we take this ladder down, I'm gonna flip that breaker and see if anything blows up first. Here I was all excited to come over here and flip the switch, you know, but we're missing. Hey, not bad though. Three out of five. So the next step, Mike and I went through this the other day of stuff he wants to keep, not keep, that kind of thing. So since it's kind of all where I need to be, we're going to sort through everything. A lot of this stuff is going to go down below. Let's get this all cleaned up, picked up by the way. Mike did come earlier today with man behind the scenes and they cleared a trailer load, a bunch of stuff out from the bottom side, which is awesome. And in case you're wondering, you can fit a TL240 skid steer underneath the building thanks to that new door. And with all the stuff that Aaron and Mike got out of the way, now the FUBARU's crammed all the way in the back. We've got all kinds of room down here. And this is something we'll keep working on over time. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not in a huge rush to get this thing filled up myself. But we do have to get quite a bit of it out of the way, so we're ready to go for some of our other projects. Well, it's not completely empty. Obviously, we still have a long way to go on that, but we've got everything rearranged and moved out of the way so we can get the last two beams right here in this spot. I don't know what it is about that type of lighting on this hardwood floor, but man, do I love it. I want to get the rest of this lumber staged. So with all the lumber in, it's time to get all the rigging moved down. I don't have enough time today. It's like two o'clock to get the beam started, but I should have enough time to go ahead and get both rigging sections set and ready. Oh no, the sock cap's doing the hair dirty today. That's, that's a heck of a look, bud. Safety at some point, as I sometimes say. All right. Put the second one on. Now 
and you may find this hard to believe, but the more I do this, the quicker I get at it. We're good to go ahead and, and, uh, and try to get one raised up there. I do crown them, but they also roll around a lot on the way up, so I'm not sure how much good I'm doing. See if we can get this thing finagled in here. Misplaced my framing hammer somewhere, so we got this thing. Oh, that's neat. Let's start it like that. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good odds. Watch this fella right here when we do this. That's neat, huh? Just using these little screws to kind of tack everything into place for now. Then we've been coming back with those timber locks. Try to pull this end up just a little snugger. That's about as much as I want to pull on that. So it is raining outside today, but it is not raining inside here, which is pretty cool. There are some spots that leak and a lot of people are calling out because the daylight holes are pretty obvious. Most of those are not holes in the actual metal. Most of that is holes at the seam where the metal has kind of peeled away due to the roof sagging. The goal is once we get it up into place where we can get it, then hopefully that metal will lay a little bit better like it originally was installed. And then we can go through, we can rent Dirt Perfect's big 80 foot man lift and go along there in any place that needs re-secured, we can re-secure some screws and then some heavy duty aluminum paint over the top of it. There's no point in patching these holes though if we don't have the roof where we want it yet. And I will real quick take time to address one other question or comment that I keep getting is that by putting all these posts in, we're losing a ton of square footage. There's eight new posts. It's a total of two square feet. I know, that two square feet is what was gonna put me over the edge of this being a useful building. Might as well tear it down at this point, I guess. So let's get that other beam up. Now I got the second upright cut and I got my glue on there. Hopefully it fits. Now you'll notice she's got a lot of wobble in her. That's because this side isn't touching any rafters yet because of the shape of the roof. But I learned on the previous ones, before I try to press that up into place to where it does have contact, it's a lot easier to go ahead and get that second beam on now. I don't know. All right, we'll see if we can get it to slide this way just a little bit. Mm. Splinters under the fingernail, that's fun. I'm gonna run some timber locks through, and grab everything. So I'll be right back, I'll, I'll be right back. Hold on. All right, you tell me when. How's that, huh? Yeah, pretty much perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. It needs to be a little higher because of the way it sits on that arch. We'll run that in, then we'll run another one in. There we go. 
to get a screw up into that truss there, and then we can start walking that end up. So somebody did make the comment, and they're 100% right, and I've been doing it, but I don't know if I've been talking about it. You can see there's one there, and they're done down on that end, but these need to be screwed off to the truss, because if they're not screwed off to the truss, because of the shape, they'll want to walk up that truss instead of pushing up, or we'll push up, and then they'll slip all of a sudden, and that would be an issue. You can see we've got a big old gap here though, so we can't do that yet, we gotta get that pushed up and into place. But as they make contact, I've been putting screws into the trusses so it's all tied together. So I'm gonna leave you up here. This post has contact. This is the post we're gonna go up with first. We gotta get these, there's about three inches there, and it's a little tricky for you to see. We'll get those to have contact which will get us caught up on a few of these and then we can move our way down. So we are up quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and run a long screw in this one. It's not quite touching, but it's close enough. It'll, it'll pull that together tight for me. Then we'll be good on either side of the post. And then we'll go up just a little bit more on that end. Try to finish that out. So that little scratch mark will kind of show us where we started and where we're at now. We're gonna slide this little slip post down to hold that progress for us. So as we lift, this just slips down the post, hence why I call it a slip post. So to gain what you watched up there, we ran out four and a half inches of stroke. Pretty wild. It's gonna be feet though. The other thing we gotta do is laminate this beam together as we go. Otherwise, it's not gonna be as strong as we need it. I just got some two and a half inch timber locks to do that. Jumped ahead just a little bit on you. We're getting the second beam up, second board up on the last beam. Fly that right up into place. Beautiful. So I wasn't 100% in love with the way I did these first two. I was still kind of trying to figure out my system whenever I put these first two on. I like the style I got going with the other posts, so I decided to go ahead and change these over real quick so they're 100% good to go. And then we've just gotta go ahead and do that on the last post we just did. That post, that post there. That was a confusing explanation. And then the last thing, well, one of the last big things we have to do is get these six by sixes, these four six by sixes down the middle. We gotta get those set up to receive a jack. That's got a table attached. This table's gonna get taller as we go, I suppose. I could unattach it, but it's kind of handy at the moment. I just love that it's raining outside and I'm dry. It's, you know, normally I'd be out welding an implement up or something. Well, I think with that on there, we should be able to lose that rope now. So do this, we're literally just gonna cut the post. Once I got clearance for my blade, go ahead and put a two by six on this side of it. So these are boards we used for the concrete forming down below. Getting its second life already, which is pretty cool. Now I can bring this cut around a little more. Especially if you got a good battery. Goes a long way. Three quarters of the way around. Now put the second board on, just like the other ones. There we go. Slide that filler in there, just like so. And then repeat three more times. 
All right, so we are all set. Everything is ready to go as far as that goes. I've got you on a time lapse outside, but I don't know how that's going to turn out with the rain. One wrong raindrop, and that's all she wrote on that camera angle. We're going to go one full stroke on every jack. See what we end up with. Put the hard hat on in case any little blocks of wood fall out. Hopefully she doesn't have too much to say. She'll talk though. All right, we're about the third of the way up the stroke on that one. We're going to move to the next one. And the last one. And then we start over. Just keep working our way back and forth. We're gonna leave that one sit for a minute. Let it make up its mind on what it wants to do. So we're just gonna do a half stroke. I was gonna do a full stroke. Oh, we're a little over half on most of those actually. Pretty close to a full, but she's pretty chattery. We'll let her kind of think about it overnight and come back in the morning and finish it off. And then tomorrow, which will be the next video, we're going to start getting the cable system all hooked up with the come along so we can kind of help pull the wall in. I'll explain why I've waited till this point in time to use the cables. I think it'll make sense once I kind of draw it out for you. They're definitely going to be needed, but I'm not quite ready for them. Well, I am now. Here's the crazy thing. This end, the trusses must still be fairly strong because it's lifting the whole thing. I'm going to run those boards down, hopefully the time lapse turned out, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. This is something, man. 